Konnichiwa. Hi, this is uh, Tina Zhou, Enterprise Architect for Hong. At the same time, I'm also the Equino Edge Stack TSC co-chair. Uh, um, I was the chair uh, co-chair last year. I just got elected, re-elected for this year, 2019-2020. And thank you for all the support, especially from uh, the companies uh, like uh, NTT and Renesis, uh, who are the active participants in Equino. Okay, um, so first of all, I would like to talk about Equino Edge Stack Role Playing. Why? Because this morning, uh, like Jim and Chris and all the other speakers have already talked about there are many open source projects in Linux Foundation and also in the other community. But more important to the end users, it's about the deployable, whether this is deployment ready. So in this spirit, Equino is more like a deployment ready and oriented to the um, deployment and production ready. So Equino take uh, the specific use cases like uh, the enterprise use case, IoT use cases, and cloud use cases, telco use cases, and select the specific hardware piece and the software. The hardware could be based on like open edge or specific uh, hardware. The software is a set of a software stack or the um, some um, integration of uh, the upstream community like Kubernetes, ONAP, and the other things. And based on this uh, piece of uh, software and hardware, we do the fully CICD to do the integrated uh, um, integrated uh, uh, continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. So uh, we do have a community lab, which is located in New Hampshire University. And we have many uh, validation lab across the whole world in Europe, uh, in Japan, China, and in the US and Canada. So those um, validation lab is corresponding to some specific blueprint. It connected to the CI via the Jenkins. You can set up the Jenkins peers from your validation lab. You can also do the CD. CD means you push the deployment logs from your validation lab to the um, Nexus located in Equino. So also we provide the community lifecycle support. All the project could be at the incubation and then becomes uh, mature and core and then it becomes uh, the, um, the archive uh, projects. So the full um, community uh, life cycle support, it supports a long-term support. Uh, finally, the production quality is because all the blueprints have to be like driven or specific, have the involvement and engagement from the end user. That's why uh, I, we can say it's production quality. So what are the benefits we bring here? Benefit number one, low cost. Because from the end user point of view, no matter what, in the end of the day, you still need to call all your vendors to your lab or to your trial to do um, the downloading, integration, and testing. Um, so if you do it in the community, it saves your OPEX in advance. Also, it could be larger scale deployment because like, we have the newly uh, SmartNet <coughs> blueprint proposal. We have at least uh, one, two, three uh, hyperscalers, and at least the one, two, two operators are very interested on that. It becomes one common software stack could be used by several uh, end users. This is how you have this blueprint as a recipe, but it can be used, like if you have the unagi rice, the recipe is unique. You can make all the unagi rice all over the Japan, all over the world. That's my favorite food, by the way. Thank you. Um, and also zero touch provisioning, because uh, we do the edge cloud um, uh, zero touch uh, provisioning here. Um, we have um, different blueprints, some of them using ONAP or the Kubernetes and the other orchestration and controllers to do the zero touch provisioning. And I'll uh, give you an example, the rack, they use ISO images to build the binary. So you build ISO images as a foundation 
of the software stack. But then you can do the telecom uh, telco appliances. You have SIBA for the uh, GPON deployment. You have REC for the uh, radio 5G deployment. Just like a uh, slicing of um, the telco appliances. It's very easy to, to deploy. For the industry adoption, uh, we have uh, many uh, industries like um, we have a WeBank, which is more like a, um, PayPal in China. It's very big. They uh, bring their use case in. We have uh, the industry IoT, and we also have uh, like insurance company, the VNF vendors. They have different kinds of um, uh, industry. In this way, we can accelerate the industry adoption of this blueprint and this technology. Uh, lastly, I mentioned the hardware. Uh, OCP Open Edge is the telco uh, hardware specs. So Equino, the telco appliance uh, blueprint family, integrate them as an upstream uh, hardware requirements. So all the uh, hardware pieces in this blueprint family will need to comply with the OCP Open Edge. Of course, there are more like OCP hardware. We also have the other um, OCP, rather than OCP and the other like we have open power. No one mentioned it yet, but maybe in the near future, somebody said, hey, this is our hardware requirements. You have to comply with. So this is the concept of uh, Equino. Before Equino, um, after Equino, the developers so before uh, Equino, the developers has to go to the upstream community and download and test the software, integrated them. But with the blueprint, you already do the work in the community. That's the whole concept. So um, let's have a look what Equino release one has released. This is from June, but today is uh, uh, December 16. We've already have uh, the R2 completed internally in the community. The announcement from the media will be next month in January because of the holiday season in the US. So let's have a look. Uh, from left to right, you can see the gateways. It could include a thin gateway or a thick gateway. Inlet means edge light IoT. There's the IoT gateway and the UCP for SD-WAN have been deployed in about 10 uh, tier 1 operators in the whole world. There is uh, one more uh, which will be released 3, which is led by Tencent. They have already deployed in Tencent <coughs> buildings in China, in Shenzhen. And also they have uh, the plans to deploy in several other tier 1 cities in China. The Radio Edge Cloud, uh, called REC, it's located in the industry or the telco radio edge applications or HCI. So this is part of the 5G deployment for the configuration and deployment on the multi sites. And IEC is integrated edge cloud, could be deployed in the mini data center edge. Type one means uh, the small board like uh, Mark Uh Type two means it can run on the, uh, on the edge. Um, on the edge server. There is a type 4, which is also part of release 2. That means uh, you can do the AR, VR. Uh, they have done the virtual classroom, very interesting. If you go to Wikipedia, you can see uh, the teachers and the students are, looks like in the virtual room. The Far Edge Styling X provides the integration of Styling X to the very Far Edge distributed cloud. Um, it can run in between the uh, mini data center and the on-premise DC edge. So the provider's access edge is led by Red Hat, um, the OS company, but um, they do a very good job here to work with the operators to provide the PAE here. Uh, lastly, not the, the only thing, the Network Cloud Blueprint family has about seven blueprints. From release one, uh, we released the Unicycle and Rover. This term means Rover is the very end, far end, with one server. Unicycle has about six to seven servers with two to three control nodes, and the rest are the compute nodes. Uh, these are part of the telco and cloud edge to help operators to deploy the 5G. So uh, people may ask, 
So we have release one, so how about release two? Release two is more like an industry enabler and also the enhancement to the release one or the existing blueprint. Uh, besides uh, the enhancement, we have a lot of uh, community lab and uh, validation. We have more and more either uh, from Lynx Foundation, uh, thank you, Sim, I hope he's here, uh, for uh, the, also the, the board budget to purchase some more um, hardware and uh, pay for the, the lab staff there. And also, uh, it's very kind, some uh, companies donate their spare hardware here so we can do more work at the community. Um, the mandatory security and conformance testing is very interesting. Uh, starting from re uh, release two, we have the security conformance that makes all the code will be scanned by the sonar cloud, which is a static, uh, static code scanning. But also, we recommend uh, several dynamic code scanning and uh, security mechanism. If you want to go through the um, maturity review, and the blueprint has to go through this uh, more secure mechanism. And for the uh, conformance testing, we have uh, the layering um, mechanism. Like this is a feature project called Equino's Blueprint validation framework. In this framework, you can have the hardware conformance testing, operating system conformance testing, based on CentOS, Ubuntu, and etc. And also the Kubernetes conformance testing. We uh, selected the Sonabel from the Kubernetes CNCF community and tested here. So we do set up a liaison official channel with ORAN, ONF, ONAP, and LFEDGE and all the other communities. So uh, maintaining this uh, uh, official channel is very important because we do take the upstream first uh, methodology, uh, don't fork, so we don't take any technical depth. And if we do find anything we need to add, first we go to the upstream community ask, hey, we do have these questions, uh, can you please add this new feature? If they say, oh, this is not generic feature, it can be developer within Equino. So we come back to Equino and create a feature project, which means the developer and the project, then uh, we, we develop it there. And the feature project will be used by multiple blueprints. Um, the last thing, API specs. API specs uh, provided API, uh, some of them in line with the ETIMEC API standards. So we provide implementation divided into two groups, the developer facing APIs and also the infrastructure APIs. So we have the wiki on the community lab. If you are interested, go there and have a look. You can find out uh, the different lab. As long as you have your VPN, we open a credential for you. Anyone can use it. It's open to everyone. Okay, let's have a look as an example of how we work together with ORAN. So ORAN is RAN disaggregation. It has the the VN, uh, the virtualized network elements uh, provide a wide box hardware and standardized interface. From bottom to up, you can see in the 5G network, if you think about the layer one, layer two, there are many RAN, uh, RRU there. And then coming up, there's a DU uh, on the data plane. And then some CU for the control controller and control plan. Um, giving, um, if you're looking up, there was a RAN uh, intelligent controller, which is we call RIC. This is the part we already have a blueprint. Above it, uh, through the A1 interface, we need to do the design, inventory, policy, configuration, etc., which is the part of uh, like a subset of our own app. So we take the lightweight, um, lightweight own app there um, to fulfill this uh, functionality. So Equino Community Blueprint can supply an end-to-end -end edge stack to support NFBI. We call it a virtualized network element uh, per ORAN requirements. In the next page, you will see 
for the REC, which is the first uh, blueprint uh, doing this under the telco appliance uh, blueprint family. We take RIC, RIC is a RAN Intelligent Controller, as an upstream community uh, software component. We integrate it. You can see on the right hand side, the blue part is the Equino Blueprint. Left hand side is from ORAN SC. ORAN SC is ORAN Software uh, Committee. So, this part, everything below the RIC, you see RIC X apps. Uh, do I have a pointer? Oh yes, in my pocket. <laughs> Sorry, I have a jet lag. Okay. Should I? Oh here. Okay. So this part, uh, a rig. We include the rig uh, apps and rig basic function and rig parts, and it communicate with this part is TA telco appliance, which is the blueprint family. We have uh, thousands of lines of code building uh, ISO images. And they, they communicate through this <coughs> northbound, uh, AP, uh, northbound interface APIs. From here, from the middle well, and like the center OS, and these things um, are the fundamental software stack for TA. And REC uh, is the application as the appliances running on top of it. We also have something called SIBA, uh, the software enable band, uh, broadband access can also run as an appliance. And on the left hand side, you can see ONAP here, and you see the regional controller. Regional controller is actually a um, feature project within, um, within uh, Equino. And the regional controller is a feature project, has been used by RAC and also the other blueprints like uh, the unicycle in network club blueprint family. All right, whether the hardware pieces is part of REC is a discussion point. But there are five flavors hardware are used. For release two, only one flavor is validated is part of release two. And the others may be in the release three. It's like which one has been validated. But the CICD pipeline and enablement are happening on all the other flavors. So I know there are many uh, vendor companies in Japan. If you want to join this blueprint or this blueprint family, you can bring your specific hardware first, download this software stack, and install and integrate onto your hardware to see whether it works. If it works perfectly, <coughs> that means you're complying with this uh, uh, blueprint. If not, uh, you can find out whether there's any like uh, software patches you want to submit. Uh, so the benefits to do all of this uh, REC is like we can do the fully integrated appliances to address our REN requirements. We can only also do the fully automated zero-touch provisioning because uh, you can do it all through the regional controller. And it supports both x86 and ARM instruction set and support the OCP white box and OEM and the other hardwares. So, so far this, uh, this one, who knows where it is? Let's say it's a Nokia uh, Airframe uh, edge, uh, Open Edge Server and the uh, HPE and Dell servers and uh, Marvel servers and uh, MPU servers. Okay. Okay, so in detail how we liaison with the other organization like we provide the liaison between ORAN and Equino. So first we take requirements and specifications from ORAN working groups and then they input into the Linux Foundation community and Wiki and Jira and then we integrate ORAN code into Equino community blueprints. At the same time we also need Kubernetes, ONAP, the software and the hardware OCP OEMs as an upstream integration, you see these two arrows into this blueprint. So we do the blueprint validation and lab testing and deliveries here. At the same time, this additional integration in ORAN SC happens here, and it will feed that loop to here. Um, the integrated uh, additionally will send the input to the end-to-end -end certification, finally to the user, which are the, um, all the operators. 
Okay, let's have a look at some of the uh, blueprints as an example how uh, to show you how uh, Equino works. So this is IEC, the Integrated Edge Cloud Blueprint family. IEC can run as an individual uh, edge or individual blueprint. It can also be used by the other blueprints as a component. It supports x86 and ARM instruction set. It supports cloud native applications. So it takes the lightweight approach from button. We can see uh, there were switches and gateways as a network equipment. And going up, we can run the networking edge platform or edge server here. This FPGA may include the uh, Xilinx edge FPGA and the GPU from NVIDIA and AMD. Above it, um, no, in, in parallel, you can have the different flavors as Smartix. Uh, I mentioned we have a Smartix Blueprint, we have a Smartix uh, OVS offload feature project. They are all at the Blueprint proposal or feature, pro, uh, or feature project proposal stage. Uh, the Smartix flavor include Broadcom, uh, they uh, contribute from their Stingray uh, software stack and also from Metanox, also from Xilinx. Integrated accelerators, uh, these are the other uh, components within the accelerations for hardware. This is not really the real-time OS, it's, it's not RTOS. It's more like uh, the Ubuntu and Set OS. Above it, there is a data plan like SIOV and DPDK support. On top of it, there are three blocks, the infra, infrastructure orchestration and installer, network, networking software and controllers. So Kubernetes, of course, is most important the orchestration, uh, like um, many of the blueprints are using Kubernetes. And few, it takes from the OpenMV, from the LFN, and the uh, Campus as one of the containerized installer is being used here. Uh, we support different kinds of uh, Linux uh, system networking, and VPP and OBS are two alternatives for the forwarding plan. So OBS is more the existing one. The VPP uh, is part of uh, the FIDO because it provides the high performance forwarding platform by uh, using the mechanism of uh, the batch of a packet forwarding. Uh, on the controller, Calico is part of the CNCF project, and Network Service Mesh is the emerging technology, and XConnect with the contribution from uh, VMware. And then Conti VPP is already upstream from FIDO community. OVN Kubernetes is more to how to manage the OBS. So we have the controller, networking software, and infra orchestration in installer. Let's have a look what kind of uh, different applications we're running or services. Knative is more for serverless, and Kubiflow for machine learning, HX for IoT services. We can run either on bare metal or containers. Uh, of course, we can take some lightweight app orchestration on the top. Then uh, we can give an example. We talk about the ARM architecture support on Radio Edge Cloud Rack. You can see from here, uh, we need to, we already done the remote installer, uh, providing some ARM packages for remote installer, and also um, ARM images and packages for center OS. Also, secondly, uh, the ARM solutions for hardware management. In this case, the rack can support uh, multi-arch. Okay, this figure is only part of the release two, but it can give you an idea how the other blueprints can use IEC as an ARM enabler. You can see from here the rack. Uh, the Radio Edge Cloud, we talk about this. It can run directly on the telco appliances. And the CBA, it's more for the uh, GPON case. Um, it runs on TA and also IEC because uh, all the CBA code is actually from ONF code. Um, any changes will go there. 
Currently, uh, it builds on TA, can run directly, and also the CBA code on IEC can also run, you can get today. And the CBA on TA are still under development from the AR64 point of view. Micro Mac uh, is interesting. This, uh, there is a project from Finland, it's called the Smartest 5G Road. They build the smartest 5G road all, way, all the way from Helsinki to the very west city in Finland. Um, the use case is, the first use case is to, who can guess, uh, to avoid the collision of reindeers. Because the reindeer is going for the Christmas gift is so busy on the highway, you try to avoid the reindeers bump into each other. This is just one use case. The other one is it can do the some smart navigation and tell the cars it's it's very icy in front and the weather changes. Please pay attention or some uh, some road is blocked um, and please select the other way. Something like that. They have put some very small boxes in the light poles in between the uh, base station and or uh, below the light poles. So it, it's more like the very far uh, micro Mac. And then Elliot, I mentioned it already, the, e, the Edge Light IoT previously. How? Three more minutes? Three more minutes? Oh, time flies. Okay, uh, then IEC Type 4 AR VR Edge, I mentioned it's for, uh, this version is for the Edge, uh, for the virtual classroom, and the next release, uh, release three by mid of 2020, there will be more uh, data visualization added. And the connecting vehicle, I'm gonna uh, describe it in the next page. Uh, it has been uh, deployed through the TARS project and, uh, in China from Tencent. The AI Edge was uh, uh, powered by Baidu and WeBank. And the 5G Max size, it's more like a B2B2C. Like China Mobile give the B2B 5G services to Tencent, and Tencent give the B2C services to end user, including the cloud gaming, including the live streaming, and including the HD video. Okay, this is how uh, Tencent's uh, um, connected vehicle blueprint uses. It can do the location accuracy, so you know where it is. And the smart navigation this is similar to Micro Mac. And the safe drive improvement telling you, okay, you gotta turn, change the lane, but there is a car there, because you, sometimes you were blocked by the uh, blind point. You cannot see it as a driver. And also reduce the traffic violation. It's all telling you from the Mac platform to the car. How can we make this happen? And this is the connected vehicle blueprint architecture made by Tencent, together with, uh, uh, in Chinese, it's Dongfeng Group. Uh, I don't know, it's called East Wing Group. It's, a, it's the number one biggest uh, um, uh, the automo automotive uh, uh, company in China. Um, the integrated uh, Edge Cloud AR VR stack um, it's a similar because it's part of IEC Blueprint family. You can see it just changes uh, more like a lightweight, uh, remove the unnecessary part. But this part it has the, the, the GPUs from uh, the AMD or the uh, uh, NVIDIA. Okay. Um, this is a, a demo made by IBM all the way from the stage one to collect some signal strength data and then do data collection and data aggregation uh, this uh, edge server and then you can do the data visualization think about we have 5g or wi-fi in this room but not every spot had the same uh, um, strength of the signal then you can see a lot of a green light green, yellow, orange, rainbow like a skittle. It's American candy, if you like it. <laughs> you will see a lot of spots. You know the green part maybe have the strongest signal. This is one of uh, the VR um, demo here. Okay, so this is a, a, an overview of uh, our two groupings we are announcing very soon, but this is what we complete, including the connected vehicle, TA blueprint family, edit, uh, KNI, Network Cloud, IEC, and uh, ICN.
Okay, how to get involved? We have a website, a wiki, and I think my slides are ready and here. Uh, no worries, last page. Take away. <laughs> <laughs> so APNA now is um, proudly announced we are stage three project, because uh, in LFH we have different uh, stages. Only two projects, we have seven projects, only two reach the stage three. That means we can end the acceleration time to deployment from projects to products and production. Uh, we have a 10 more blueprints, uh, including all the segments of use cases. And the new blueprint include the Edge AI, 5G Mac, and Time Critical Edge, and other tools, and the new community lab, and the Edge APIs <laughs> in, within the LF Edge projects. That's about it.